been getting some stressed out students for law of signs, but hopefully you read the blog part of the assignments this week. So if you open up the page that I put for every week, this one is the week of May 4th, that says what the assignments are. There's a little paragraph at the top, and that explains that, well, it doesn't really explain, it just tells you that everything's changed, there are no grades for these assignments, there is not going to be a final, you're all going to get at least the same grade that you had last quarter, you could get 100% if you do all your assignments. So even if you don't get these right, as long as you're trying them and turning something in, you're still going to get your 100% for the quarter. But I know you guys like to get it right. You don't like to just do stuff just to do it. So I've been trying to answer your emails. Yesterday I did another a video, two videos. One had examples of the day before in it. So hopefully you're starting to get it if you're really concerned about getting it. If not, just keep trying it and you'll be on track for 100%. Another thing is, is that this is pretty advanced. You don't really, you're not expected to know this inside and out by the end of geometry. You really get into this more in trigonometry, which you'll see in Algebra 2 and definitely later on in your high school career. So this is just an introduction to it. And when you get tested on it later in high school, it should be easier the second time you see it. All right, so moving on. Today we're going to get into law of cosines, and you have to use law of cosines when you're given side, angle, side. All right, you're given two sides and an angle. When you're given that, two sides and an angle with the angle in between the sides, side, angle, side, there's no way to use law of sines for this. So I, this is just showing you or trying to show you that law of sines is not going to work for this one. <coughs> Excuse me. All right doesn't matter which two of the three that you pick here. There's only one number that you can put in the fraction sine of A over A, and that's the 30 degrees. That's your angle A. There's only one number you can put in in sine of B over B, and that's side B, 10. And there's only one number in the last fraction, and that's side C, which is 20. So no matter which two of these fractions you use to try and solve, you're going to have two unknowns in each of those fractions. Remember, one of these fractions, you got to have numbers on both the top and the bottom, and none of them have that. That's what I was trying to say in that first video when I said you have to have an angle and the side opposite of it, or else law of sines isn't going to work. So you have an angle, but no side opposite of it. You have a side, but no angle opposite, and you have a side, but no angle opposite. So when you have a situation like this, law of sines is not going to work, and this is what all the problems are like today. So in comes law of cosines. This is law of cosines, which is longer and more complicated, harder to remember. So I'm going to do another video and show you where this equation comes from. And in doing that, I'm going to have to show you a trig identity, it's called, which is pretty complicated. And you're definitely not going to get into that till later in high school. So if the where this formula is derived from video is just speaking Greek to you, don't worry about it. You don't need it for this year, but a lot of you are going to understand it and it's going to help you when you get into trigonometry later. But for today's work, you don't need to understand where this formula comes from. You just have to substitute in the numbers for it. All right, so this is the example I gave you that you cannot use law of sines for, but you can use this formula. So little a is the side opposite of angle a. That's going to be the easiest thing to find when you have a picture like this, the missing part. It's either angle B, angle C, or side A, and that missing side is the easiest one to solve for. So here's your formula, and now you just start plugging in numbers into your formula. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of A. That's a lot to try and remember. I also put a handout. It's labeled in Friday's folder. And that's just notes, and they're actually good notes. So if you're having trouble with law of sines or law of cosines, look at that handout in Friday's folder, and that gives you some written information as to how to handle these formulas. All right, now it's just substituting in. B is the side that's opposite angle B, so that's 10. 10 is across from B. C is the side that's opposite angle C, that's the 20. 
and A is angle A. So those are your three numbers that you have, and those are the only three numbers you're going to need here. So 10 goes in for B, 20 goes in for C, 10 goes in for the B, 20 goes in for the C, and 60 goes in for the angle A. Now you just start doing the math. 10 squared is 100, 20 squared is 400, 2 times 10 is 20, 20 times 20 is 400, so these three numbers multiply together as 400, and then cosine of 60 is 0.5. All right, now you add 100 plus 400 is 500, 400 times 0.5 is 200, 500 minus 200 is 300. Not too bad. But remember, the formula is A squared. We want to know just what A is, the side opposite of A. So you have to unsquare A. You have to take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 300 is 17.32. And that's how you do these problems. That's all you need for the four problems that are in Wednesday's assignment. Now, when we get into Thursday's assignment, you're going to be asked to solve for angle B or angle C first. And when you get down to uh, one of these steps, then you're going to have to start moving numbers to the other side to get cosine of that angle by itself. So tomorrow is a little bit more complicated. It's still the same formula, but then you got to change up the formula a little bit by moving things to the other side to get the angle by itself. Today, it's just straight up plug in the numbers, do the math. And you're done. So hopefully that's enough to get you through these problems. And then this next video, that's going to be a little crazy, but it'll show you where this formula comes from.